fans, and welcome to our third and final edition of Inside Cart from Monterey, California. I'm Chris Miles, and behind me is the picturesque Monterey Coast. In front of me, historic Pebble Beach Golf Course. But on today's show, Chris McClure is going to give us a rundown on all the standings within the Cart FedEx Championship Series. Our driver profile is with Scott Pruitt of Pat Patrick Racing. And we'll also take a look at the model that goes inside the wind tunnel to help with the aerodynamics for our champ cars. Stay tuned, you're watching Inside Cart on Fox Sportsnet. Inside Cart is brought to you by Olympic, for all the beautiful wood in your home. By Culligan, available at fine retailers nationwide. And by Microsoft, powered by Microsoft Windows CE. This 1997 PPG Cup winner has already clinched the 1998 championship. But Chris McClure, you know there are a lot more races left in this Cart FedEx Championship Series. The center of the summer of 98 belonged almost exclusively to Alex Zanardi. From Detroit in June to Toronto in July, he ran off a record tying four straight victories baked at least a dozen donuts, and virtually assured his second straight championship. From there, though he was hardly a sidebar, headlines did slide away from Zanardi a bit. He was always in contention at Michigan, finishing third, but it was a breakthrough day for a young man named Moore who claimed his first win at the fabled distance of 500 miles, following an awesome dice that lasted, well, 500 miles. At Mid-Ohio, Zanardi missed the mess that marked the opening, but still hit the deepest rut of his year, 12th place, while absorbing a $50,000 fine for rough driving. He wasn't alone. It was a bouncy, bumpy, trouble-fraught day leading to Adrian Fernandez's second win of the year and Bobby Rahal's first podium. At Road America, another breakthrough and another Zanardi bump. There was no penalty for that. There was for trailing Dario Franchitti because the young Scott was not going to be denied that day, finally nailing down his first victory after so many close calls. Zanardi ran second after Michael Andretti lost a tire on the final lap. In Vancouver, the championship for Zanardi became reality just hours before the birth of his first son in faraway Italy. But even then, the headlines went up pit road, again visiting Team Green, where Dario Franchitti put two elements together, a pole and a win, something he had often tried but never accomplished. And then Laguna Seca, another breakthrough, perhaps the most important of them all. After 78 champ car races, five poles, three second place finishes, and untold frustrations, Brian Herta found the magic, found a way to keep Zanardi on his hip, and found the checkered flag for the first time in his career. It did not erase what had gone before, but it certainly brought closure to the moniker, best driver never to win. Brian Herta's victory at Laguna Seca gave the U.S. 22 points in the Nations Cup and its fourth victory of the year, expanding the U.S. lead over Italy's Alex Zanardi by six points. The United States and Italy are now the only two nations that can win this cup. In the Constructors' Championship, Renard continues to pile it on. They carried Herta last time out and picked up 22 more points. A maximum of 22 points is available in any race. And Renard has won 15 this year while averaging 21.4 points per event. Now it's time for one of our favorite segments. One-on-one. -on -one. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Hi, I'm Chris Meyer from Stoughton, Wisconsin, and my favorite driver is Tony Kanan. And Tony, I would like to know when, what you like to do when you're not driving. Okay, Chris, when I'm not racing, I'm, I'm living in Miami, so very sunny city. Uh, I'm doing, I play tennis, I'm doing water skiing a lot. And actually, one of my preferred things to do is rollerblading. That's what I'm doing now.
As we head to break, enjoy the surf and turf along 17 Mile Drive. Coming up next, Scott Pruitt of Pat Patrick Racing. You're watching Inside Cart on Fox Sportsnet. Welcome back to Inside Cart. You're looking at picturesque Fisherman's Wharf here in Monterey, California. Now it's time for our driver profile, and Larry Henry spoke with Pat Patrick Racing, Scott Pruitt. There is no question that Scott Pruitt has paid his dues and then some. A winner in IMSA, Trans Am, and Champ Cars, Pruitt is currently 12th on the all-time career start list in the FedEx Championship Series. However, his racing career almost ended in March of 1990. When testing at the South Florida Fairgrounds in West Palm Beach, he suffered a horrendous crash, which shattered his knees, heels, and back. You know, it was just a, you know, a horrific accident. And being in a wheelchair for you know, three to four months and you know, on crutches, but my focus, you know, always remained the same. Um, I wanted to be back in a car and racing. That was my love. Uh, that was my dedication. I treated it like a job. I mean, I went to physical therapy six days a week, eight to ten hours a day, and treated it exactly like a job. 1994 was a year away from competitive racing for Pruitt, but not from the racetrack. He teamed up with car owner Pat Patrick to spend the season testing for Firestone, as that company prepared for their return to Champ Car Racing. We booked as many tests as possible right after races, so we'd actually be there a number of times for the race, watch the race, see what was going on, and then test Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday after the event. And um, fortunately, every, you know, you just had to keep that, that mind focused all the time of, you know, running hard, running hard, and, and, and doing whatever it took to get, you know, really good feedback when, when we were in the design and, and conception of the, of the tire that we were going to go racing with in 95. Hours upon hours of testing by himself, gained Pruitt confidence not only in himself, but in the Firestone tires when he returned to the series full-time in 1995. Through um, all those test miles, they, they were in a position to really be ready to go racing hard when we rolled out in 95, and, and we saw that. We, you know, fourth or first race out um, at Miami, uh, our first win at, at Michigan that season, running very, very strong in a, a number of other events, um, two or three, uh, you know, second, third, fourth place finishes. So. So overall, I think that was a huge success and just a huge statement of the commitment and dedication that Firestone had and Patrick Racing had as we move forward into that season. What did the win of the Michigan 500 mean for you and Pat Patrick, the first one for Firestone and the way you did it uh, right. at the end of the race? Oh, it was huge. I mean, people still talk to me about that, and I still, you know, think about it new, you know, number of times. And um, you know, every time it's so sweet. It's one of those that. Um, that victory and the way it came down and, and where it was and 500 miles and little Al and myself and fighting it out, I mean, it was just the whole thing was just so, so historic, you know, for, for myself personally, for Firestone's return, for, for Pat Patrick's return, and one that we'll never forget. Pruitt throughout the years has had a very solid relationship with car owner Pat Patrick since they joined forces in 1994. Pat has been just a, a real pleasure to, to work for, to work with, He's become very, very good friends. Um, the things that we've done together, the achievements that we've had have been, uh, have been tremendous as well. But while Pruitt and Patrick have done well together, they're parting ways at the end of the season as Scott heads to the Archero Wells team, where he'll be driving a race car with the so far underpowered Toyota engine. Going from a contender to a team that still has to prove itself has many asking the question, why? Why not? Um, I mean, it's, it's perfect. I mean, people would have thought, one, I was crazy doing a Firestone deal, and look at the dividends it's paid off. I mean, people would have thought back and gone, you know what, Firestone's never going to do it. It's going to take them three, four, five years before they get it right, and then, you know, they're going to have problems and this and the other. They come out of the box first year and they go win races. I mean, with everything as close as it is, the competition as tight as it is, um, I want the opportunity to be involved with, with a program that, that has the, the pieces to it that could give you competitive advantage. With Bobby Ray Hall's retirement, you become the oldest driver. <laughs> in the hey, thanks for mentioning that series. too. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> what about that being being the elder statesman? The of elder art? statesman. You know, it's funny because I never would have thought it. You know, here I am at 38 years old. I'm I'm the oldest driver. Um, but you know, what can I say? I love doing what I'm doing, and I and, I mean, here Bobby's uh, 44, 45 years old, and so. From where I'm at to, to his age, I have a lot of good years left in, uh, in racing. I started this when I was eight years old, which is 30 years ago, and um, would have never thought that I could have achieved the things I've done, 
um, seen the places I've seen, uh, met the people I've met, and, and really have done something for my whole life that I've truly loved. The one challenge that Pruitt understands, the competitiveness of the FedEx Championship Series, where one second in a race can spell the difference between victory or a fifth or sixth place finish. That's the name of the game, though. I mean, that's the, that's the, that's the whole thing. That's, that's the essence of, of what it's all about. Um, and and when, when, you, when you have a good race and, and, and when you do win or when you, you know, finish on the podium, it's like you know, the race that Adrian and I had at Mid Ohio. For everybody, that was such a high, you know, and something that was shared by, by so many people. And, and one that every race you go into it going, you know, we just gotta keep at it, keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. And, and, and when you look at those people who are winning, if it's, if it's Alex or, or if it's Jimmy or, or if it's Dario, you know, they happen to get all, all the pieces right that weekend. Well, we get it all right weekends as well. So that's, that's what you have to continually try to achieve is to get all the pieces right. And so it's just, you know, getting in the trenches and, and fighting hard every weekend and, and trying to dig yourself out and, and doing whatever it takes and never say die. I mean, just always, no matter how big that mountain is in front of you, you know, trying to continually get over it and achieve and, and, and go beyond. As we head to break, sights from historic Laguna Seca Raceway. Coming up next, how the wind tunnel model is used for aerodynamics. You're watching Inside Cart on Fox Sportsnet. Welcome back to Inside Cart. As we take a look at the beautiful Monterey Coast, Chris McClure was able to take a look at Walker Racing's wind tunnel model, and that's this week's Honda Pit Pass. And here at Walker Racing, Kevin Bayless is a vehicle dynamics engineer, which means right. you're involved in some of the wind tunnel testing and, frankly, experimenting. Yes. Okay, now what do we have right here as we go through part of the process? This is our 96 wind tunnel model. It's a model that Raynard built for us, and they maintained uh, it's an all-carbon fiber skin, just like the, the real car. It's 40% scale, and basically, to the best of everyone's ability, is an exact duplicate, only on small scale, of the actual race car. Now, over here on the rack is the updated model, same scale and everything. Yes. Also 40% scale. This is the 98 model that we've been testing. Okay, this would go into a wind tunnel and give you accurate data, just like the big car. Yes. Everything down to scale. Uh, again, all the detail is done to make everything as close as possible to the real race car. Obviously, it's not feasible to put the full-size car in a, a moving ground plane tunnel like we need to for a, an Indy car. Um, but this is what we use, and it gives us very good results. Okay, at the back, you can test a variety of wings. This is a Speedway wing, for example. You can change the angle, the side plates, all those kinds of things. Duplicate the drag, the brakes, the tires would, yes. would produce as well. How much work would you be doing along the side, winglets like this and maybe little thingy doies here and there? That's mostly what we concentrate on. Mm -hmm. um, because of the complicated nature of the major body parts, we really don't have the capacity to change those. But like you said, what we call the winglets or flugel horns, mm -hmm. um, radiator exits, a lot of the detail parts on the car, we'll concentrate a lot on those because we can make some small gains there without a large uh, price constraint. At the front, of course, you can use different nose cones and different different uh, configurations there. And of course, these are adjustable. They're, this is a Speedway front wing as well. But again, you can try all kinds of different configurations. Yes. Uh, we're also able to run the car in the wind tunnel through full ride height simulations. Mm -hmm. And we use that to determine what the optimum ride height and rake is for the car. So when we get to the track, we know that we're making the most of the downforce we have available. Real quickly, if we could go back here, I see you've got a helmet shape in here. Right. And for a number of years, it wasn't always the case, this flow here is part of the aero package. Absolutely. Uh, if you look at the driver's helmets, you'll see a lot of details in each mm -hmm. one of their helmets designed to reduce the buffeting that comes from the flow over the top of their helmet and also trying to get that as smooth as possible because all that air eventually winds up at the rear wing. Okay, let's take a look at the bottom because that also is true to form. Absolutely. Uh, it's a very detailed rendition of the underwing. That's where the majority of the aerodynamics comes into these cars. Uh, that generates the majority of the downforce and very critical piece of the equation. How much time does this save as opposed to having to do testing, real testing at the track? 
It saves an immense amount of time, and even more than that, it's a major safety issue because particularly testing like uh, Michigan and Fontana, where we're putting a lot of emphasis on with the new rear wing spec this year, you wouldn't want to send a guy out at 240, 250 mile an hour straightaway speeds with something you weren't entirely sure of. With the wind tunnel model, we can test things that may or may not work quite right, may or may not be stable, and not have to worry about what it's going to do to the driver in the long run. Thanks, Chris. Now it's time for our favorite segment. Chris's Order! Brought to you by Culligan. Hi there, what's your name? Chad Newquist. Chad. Hmm. Who's your favorite driver? Al Unser Jr. Al Unser Jr.? What would you like to ask Al? Al, you always talk about your kids, so what do they look like? <laughs> Hi, Chad. Uh, my kids look healthy, and they're spunky as all get out. So uh, they look a lot like, uh, my boys look a lot like my dad, and uh, my girls look a lot like my beautiful wife, Shelly. Now that was the husband of our own inside cart correspondent, Shelly Unser. Thanks, Al. Now in this week's Microsoft Tech Tip, Bill Adam finds a unique instrument that Mercedes Motorsports uses. It's called the Borescope. How many times have you been working on something and wished that you could see what was going on inside it to make sure everything was working properly? Well, this is something that is faced by all of the race engineers at the kart races. And the Mercedes engineers have gone a step further to actually see what takes place inside these racing motors. Now, for some time, the engineers have been able to use this equipment. It's called a boroscope. And it works by using this, a fiber optic cable that's hooked up to a light source. And after the spark plug is taken out of the hole, they can insert this or any one of a variety of different with different tips on them into that hole to take a look at the exact angle of the cylinder they want to inspect. The light source is down there and they can look through this and really check it out. But now they've gone even further. There's a great sophisticated new system that works something like this. The cable is actually put in the engine block into a very tiny hole. It's only eight millimeters big. And as the engine is running, they can watch what takes place. Now through this, the information goes into a control unit, finally over to a computer with special software, and eventually they can look and see photographs of what's taking place. Now keep in mind, this is a secret of business. They don't want to show us what takes place in the cart motors. But inside another racing motor, here's photographs, and you can see how remarkable this is. You can see the valves actually working, the firing of the spark plug down in the cylinders at the proper time, and by looking at all of these frame by frame, the engineers can tell how efficiently their engine is working. Remember, this is a huge search for speed, for horsepower, for efficiency. This unit helps tremendously. They know, as the engine is running, how well it's running. But technology isn't cheap. For all of this equipment, you're talking about $50,000. And for all that money to watch all this great video, you don't even get a bag of popcorn with it. As we head to break, here's a look at the Lone Cypress along the Monterey Coast. Coming up next, the Ray Hall Chronicles, Bobby Ray Hall's last ride. You're watching Inside Cart on Fox Sportsnet. Inside Cart has been brought to you by American Honda, proud sponsor of the 1998 FedEx Championship Series. By Shell, moving at the speed of light. By LCI International and the LCIUltimateRide.com Season of Winners Giveaway. And by PPG. All points lead to the PPG Cup. Now it's time for the Ray Hall Chronicles. Bobby Ray Hall's last ride brought to you by Shell. For the long term uh, survival of uh, Team Ray Hall, that's the, that's, you know, my interest or my concentration has to be on the business side of the equation, you know, the ability to go out and raise.